tonight. We praise God for another opportunity to come together one more time. And what's so special about today is it's Communion Sunday. So we can give God a hand clap of praise for that. Thank you, Father. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and day that dwell therein. I would just like to say good morning to each and every one, those that's in First Baptist Church Denby Sanctuary, and those that are watching on Facebook and YouTube Live. Welcome. We praise God for everyone that's out here on this morning. God is a good God. He woke us up one more time in the mighty name of Jesus. And not only did he wake us up, he woke us up clothed and in our right mind. God, we just want to say thank you. For our scripture reading this morning, it will be read by Deaconess Canty. Our prayer will be coming. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank God for Deacon Canty. In the mighty name of Jesus, our prayer will be prayed by Deacon Canty. We will have a song by Brother Anthony Witherspoon. Our announcements will be by Deacon Lenwood Wright. And then we have another song from Deacon Witherspoon. And then we will have a powerful word from on high on today from Pastor Johnson. Let's just give God a hand clap of praise one more time. God bless you. Good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Our scripture this morning is coming from Luke chapter 10 verses 25 through 37 and behold a certain young, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall I do to inherit eternal life he said unto him what is written in the law how readest thou and he answering said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, This do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he had departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. Good morning, church family. It's here at First Baptist Church, Demi, this morning. And our church family who's watching online, it's a blessing to be here again. Um, I just got to say something real quick that's uh, funny. My wife told me on last week, she said, ah, oh, you, you did a good prayer. She said, but you do it just a little bit too long. <laughs> so then I got a text from my big brother. Ah, oh, brother, that was a good prayer, but, you know, we, we on a time schedule. So I said, Jesus. So I say to myself, I'm just going to say that Jesus wept and I'm going to sit down. <laughs> but anyway, it's a blessing that you can have fun amongst your brother and 
and your wife and just laugh and just have fun in, the, in these days that we are having now. But I'm still so thankful. I'm still blessed. So my word I'm going to tell you today uh, is God got it. God got it. That's it. God got it. So let's pray. Oh, Lord, once again, Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another Sunday allowing us to come together with the ones that's here, Lord Jesus. Father, we just ask you, Lord, just continue to bless First Baptist Church, Denby. Bless our family, Lord Jesus. Bless the church family, the ones who want to come, Lord Jesus, but just can't be here because of the pandemic. Just continue to go with them, Lord. Lord, just continue to bless our, all our ministries at our church. Continue to give us strength, Lord Jesus. We continue to do your will. And Lord, just continue to bless all our heads at our church, Lord Jesus. Again, my brother uh, Deacon Linwood Wright and brother Felton Blow, continue to give them strength, Lord Jesus. Allow them just continue to work together, Lord Jesus. Just continue to bless them in your name, Lord Jesus. I know it's a hard task for them two guys to do, but Lord, all they got to do is look up to you and just say, Jesus, whenever they're having a moment, whenever they're having a situation, all they got to do is just say, Jesus. Father, just continue going without sick and shed in. Bless them, allow them to be able to uh, ease that pain, Lord Jesus, they may have. Whatever the situation may be, Lord, just continue to bless them in a mighty special way, Lord. Lord, just continue to go with our kids. Bless them also, Lord Jesus. It's a time, trying time, Lord Jesus, for them to be doing schoolwork at home on the computer, Lord. I know it's, it, it, it's rough sometimes, Lord Jesus. I know it's extra hard on the parents or the grandparents or the uncles or the, or the aunts who have to be there with them, Lord, to watch them, Lord Jesus, to keep them occupied on the computer and be able to do their homework. But, Lord, we trust in you one day, Lord, that all the schools will be able to be open one day, Lord, and allow them to be able to go back to school, Lord Jesus. Father, also, Lord, give the teachers strength. They need you also, Lord Jesus. This is very, very hard on them, Lord. Give them strength, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord, and allow them to continue doing the job that they, they need to do for the kids. And, Father, also continue going with our country. Lord, we are divided right now. And, Lord, it shouldn't be like that. You say to love thy neighbor. That's what you say, Lord. So you say to love our neighbor. We don't have to know our neighbor to love them. But, Lord, you say we have to love thy neighbor. Forget about being black or white or whatever your nationality you may be, Lord. You need to love everyone. And show love to each and every one, Lord Jesus. Let my mama always say, Lord, treat people the way you want to be treated. If we can just do those little small things every now and then, Lord, we'll be all right as a country. Father, I don't know who's going to win to be the president of the United States, but Lord, you already know. You already know who it's going to be. And Father, I'm going to thank you for allowing that, that person to be our next president, Lord. Just continue to bless the Lord. We continue to come together once again. Father, I need, I, I have a few names again, Lord, I want to just call. Father, I need you to continue going with Sister Fuzzy Trumper, Brother Ike Trumper, Sister Nottingham, Harry and, and Mary Blow, Sister Marble. Father, all the others, Lord, that made I didn't call by name, the Baller, Deacon Harrison. Touch them, Lord Jesus. Go with them, Lord. Give them strength. Bless the kids. Lord, just continue going with Laura and Henry and Laura, two brothers. Give them strength, Lord. Allow them just to continue to do the thing for their mom and dad. Lord, I know sometimes it gets hard for them, Lord. But Father, all they got to do is just say, Jesus. Lord, go with them. Bless them, Lord. Give them strength, Lord Jesus. Lord, just continue going with Alicia. Powell also, Lord. She, she's the only one of her siblings that's here. Give her strength, Lord, to be there for her father. I know sometimes, Lord, it get hard. But, Lord, I want them to think about it. it's a blessing to still have a parent. Yes, yes. It's a blessing, Lord. Even if just one. But it's a double blessing, Lord, when you got both of your parents that's still here. You're just doing the same thing for your parents that they did for you when you was a little kid. It's just reversed now. So, Father, just continue to give those, those, those kids strength, Lord Jesus. Jay and Kelly Ingram. Bless Jay and Kelly also, Lord. Give them strength, Lord Jesus. Lord, just thank you for all those blessings, Lord Jesus. 
Father, just continue to, just to, just to bless the ones who may be going through something today at church or home, Lord. I don't know the situation. I don't know what they're dealing with. But, Lord, all they got to do is call on your name and trust you and wait on you. You will work it out. I'm a living witness. You will work it out. It may not be now. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be next week. It may not be next month. It may not be next year. But God, we know that you will work it out. Work it out, Lord. Whatever it is, work it out for them, Lord Jesus. Father, just continue to go with Pastor Johnson. Continue to give him a word that may continue to take Fred battles to the next level. Bless him in a mighty special way, Lord. Father, also, Lord, protect his family that's back in North Carolina. Give him traveling mercy, Lord, when he allowed to go home and check on his family, Lord. Bless him, Lord Jesus, to get that safe. Bless him, Lord Jesus, to get back here to Newport News safe also, Lord. Father, we thank you for all and everything that you're doing. Father, I love you. I thank you. I honor you. And I give you all the glory. Thank you for being so good to me. Thank you for touching my body each day. Thank you for going with my family each day. Thank you for blessing my grandkids each day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, you good. 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 I love you, God. All these blessings I've asked in your name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Bless the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord, everybody. Come on. Put your hands together. Come on. Even at home, go ahead and put your hands together. Just start clapping. And I want you to do something for me this morning. You know, I always want you to sing wherever you are, regardless of what you sound like. I want you to lift your voice up to the Lord this morning. But this morning, I want you to not think about anything but the Lord. Don't think about politics. Don't think about bills. Don't think about medicines. Don't think about children. Don't think about any of those distractions, but just focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and God his Father and Jesus Christ crucified. Give him glory this morning. Give him honor and give him praise. We're going to sing a familiar song with you this morning. And come on, out sing us if you can. Put your hands. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise Let the power of the Lord rise among us. Let the power of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the power of the Lord rise among us. Let the power of the Lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise 
rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Say, let the shout of the Lord. Let, let the, the shout of the Lord rise among us let the shout of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise let the shout of the lord rise among us let the shout of the lord rise among us let the praises of our King rise among us and let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Say it again. Oh, oh, let it rise. One more time. Oh. Amen. What a powerful song. Good morning, everybody. And it is Communion Sunday, and here's for your morning announcements. Again, it was a blessing just to see so many of you on yesterday. Just remember when we do go out, whether we come into the church, uh, wherever we're going, to make sure we protect ourselves, wear our masks, and stay safe. Amen. For you, for you that didn't come out. You'll be able to concentrate your bread and crackers and your juice at home at the end of this service. Again, I would like to thank the homeless ministry for preparing 100 plus meals to serve our community, the men and women and children. Um, as always, Deacon Woodard, Minister Shambly, and Sister Faye Bonds and the team, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, we've been celebrating birthdays all the month of October, so for you, those of you who haven't called your name, happy birthday to you. As I've always stated, for your prayer lines, I mean, if you need a prayer, if you need a healing, if you need a breakthrough, please call 951-981-7368. I say again, please call 951-981-7368. And six eight seven three six eight, and watch God work. Church family, our Fall Bible Institute was just outstanding. If you didn't tune in, you missed a blessing. <laughs> Dr. Whitaker talked about healing your church hurt, and Sister Lisa Mooney talked about self care in Christianity. What a blessing! And we want to just think. The facilitators think the Bible Institute committee, all those that are teaching. That was for the adults on Saturday, but we still have one class left for our ages 6 through 10 from 6 to 6.30 p.m. by Sister Sharon Aikens, and then ages 11 through 8 by Deacons Mark Dozier and Deacons Henry Nixon, amen, from 7 to 7.30. Remember, there's no Bible study or no noonday Bible study on Wednesday by two of the most dynamic teachers on this side of heaven. Amen. Minister Perkins and Deacon Coswell continue to put that out there. And what about last week revival on Monday? Yeah. Pastor William Spencer, First Baptist Church Morrison. What an awesome time. He's, he's, the title of his sermon was What God Wants More Than Anything. How many of you know what God wants more than anything? He wants you more than anything, amen? And this Wednesday, we got another dynamic speaker, Pastor Joe Baker, Refugee, Refuge Nation Church, at 7 p.m. next Wednesday. Please, church family, make sure you log in and receive another blessing. 
We have less than nine days left before we vote. It's very, very important that we go out and vote. Amen, amen. If you haven't voted already, please, 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 please go out and vote. If you can see me real closely, I have two ribbons. I have a purple ribbon that symbolizes domestic violence, Purple Awareness Month, where we mourn our victims and celebrate our survivors. I was just looking, doing a little history. Last year was 1.9 million. And then I also have a pink on for our Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the month of October. We ask that you honor both months, domestic violence as well as our breast cancer awareness. Everybody say, hallelujah carnival. Hallelujah carnival. Come on, you at home can say it better than that. Hallelujah carnival. Hallelujah carnival. Okay, on October the 31st, we'll be celebrating our annual hallelujah carnival. However, it's going to be a little different this year due to COVID-19. This year we are calling it Hallelujah drive through The children ministry will be handling, handing out bags of candy, beverages from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on October the 31st, right here at the church. We are asking all parents to help us continue the tradition by bringing the children out to participate in our Hallelujah drive through We would like for everyone to enter on the main parking lot side and come around the building by the Family Life Center. So once again, it would be, our Hallelujah You Come will be celebrated on October the 31st from 1 to 3 p.m. Again, this is also Clergy Appreciation Month. Amen. Let's continue to celebrate our ministers, amen, for what they are doing. We ask God to continue to lift them up in prayer. We also ask that you continue to pray for our sick and shut-in, um, Brother Nathan Jones, who went to Riverside Hospital his mother, sister, Ann Hinton asked for us to continue to lift him up in prayer. He's at Riverside and ICU. Please, no visitors at this time. We also ask that you pray for Brother Alan Wesley and Sister Nicole Wesley, mother and mother-in-law, Queen Travers. She's at home and COVID-free. Amen? Amen? We also ask that you continue to pray for a deaconess in training, Linda Coleman, who went to Mary Macklett hospital emergency room on Friday and she's at home resting. Um, our condolences is to Brother S Sylvester Johnson. Today there's a private funeral for his son Keith Johnson. It's at Carter Funeral Home at, on Rich Neck Road. The service is, you can view the service at 11 a.m. by going to carterfuneralhome.com and watch it on Facebook. That is also Carla Williams twin brother, amen? Continue to lift, keep that family lifted up in prayer. Then we also ask that you continue to pray for Dorothy Hogger who lost her mother. Um, and for all those who have lost loved ones or someone that's sick, let's continue to pray, amen? amen. The Bible said we should pray without ceasing, amen? Amen. amen? We ask that you continue to pray for all those in high schools at all different, elementary, middle, high school, as well as those that are in college, uh, continue to pray for all our church staff, mm -hmm. those in the front office, our custodians, the AV, all those leaders, trustees, deacons that are constantly, deaconess that are working behind the scene, everybody. We just thank God for you. We want to thank you, church family, for your liberal giving. Can we just bow here for a word of prayer? Lord, we just thank you. We love you. We magnify you. We lift you up. Lord, bless those who gave their offering this week. Bless those who wanted to give but have not, oh God. Continue to bless First Baptist Church, Demi, Lord, that we may be a beacon light in this community and around this world. It's in your son Jesus' name I do pray and say amen. Amen, church family. We're getting ready for the word. Anybody ready for the word? Last week, Pastor Johnson preached about Developing a winning team. I'm just going to give you one synopsis. If we put our heads together, we can go far. Amen? Amen. We, Amen. we, we just want to put our heads together. Amen? That's right. That's right. That's right. So after this 
anointed music that's going to come forth. The next voice you will hear will be our interim pastor, Pastor Reverend Dr. Errol Johnson. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. I ask you to put some things out of your mind this morning. Keep pushing them out. Keep pushing them out, okay? And push them out for the joy of the Lord. Keep your mind stayed on him during these times. The song says, I, well, let's say it in a minute. I'm trading my sorrow, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord, I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain. Come on, sing it with us. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm, I'm trading, trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. My pain. I'm trading my pain. Laying them down, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Now come on and say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. There you go. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, sing it with us. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sorrow. Trading my shame. I'm trading my shame. Laying them down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Everybody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. There you go. Come on, let's do it again. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, let's do one more. Yes, Lord. Come on, we can do it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, say it. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Do it again. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. One last time. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord one more time in the house of God. Come on, let's put your hands together one more time. Let's welcome our Facebook family into the house. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. you. may be seated. I just want to thank God for another day that, that uh, we have before us. A little rain on the outside, but sunshine on the inside. Amen. I, I used to kid people and said, I, I hope the Lord doesn't come back when it's raining. Because a whole lot of folk won't go with him because it seems like we're afraid of the rain. <laughs> But I thank God again for such a precious opportunity to be in this historic place and to be able to share a word with people who love the Lord unapologetically. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand and clap of praise. We have eight days before one of the most important elections in our lifetime. And... Um, I'm praying that all of us will be participants in what will probably be something that's going to last for the next 40 or 50 years. It may not affect you and I as much, but our grandchildren and great-grand will be affected by what we do on next Tuesday. So I thank God for that. I, um, I have a word for you today. I want you to turn your Bibles to um, Luke. Um, and I had to use a, a different Bible today. I looked in mine, it's worn out. And when I got to Luke, the last part of it, the page was torn out. <laughs> and so I've had that Bible probably about 30 years. So uh, it's still got a good track record, though. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Won't you stand on your feet as, we, as I read a little bit? It's already been read for you. I'm just going to share a few words with you. Beginning with uh, Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 25. It says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in your law? How do you understand it? And the lawyer answered and said, You shall love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said unto him, Jesus did, said, you have answered correctly. Do this, and thou should live. But the lawyer wanted to justify himself, and he said unto Jesus, so who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and gave him a parable about a certain man that went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among thieves that stripped him of his raiment, his clothes, and wounded him, and departed, and leaving him half dead. And by chance there came a certain priest on the way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And unlike the priest, a Levite came, and when he saw the man at the place, he came over and he looked on him, and he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan came, and he journeyed, and he came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wound, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to the inn, and took care of him. And on the next day, he departed and told the innkeeper his two, two pence, and take care of him, and if anything is missing, and more money needed, I will give it when I return. Which now, Jesus says of the three, do you think was a neighbor unto the one that fell among the thieves. And the lawyer said, he that showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to um, talk for a few moments on the subject, a good neighbor in a bad neighborhood. A good neighbor in a bad neighborhood. In pro football, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people here watch it because you always tip me about the Giants. Um, <laughs> but in pro football, there's a play that's called a play action pass. And a play action pass is when the quarterback receives a ball from the center. And receives it from the center, he, he turns as if he's given a ball to the running back. He kind of fools the defense into thinking that the running back is going to have the ball. 
And so all the focus is on the running back. And the quarterback steps out of the pocket, and it was a good play. He's going to find a receiver downfield wide open. Amen. Are you with me? And, and, and so the idea is to throw the defense off guard. And, and if it's played well, it works out good because the goal is to distract. And, and, and so I said it to say that this year, and especially the last four years, Satan has run a play-action pass on us. He's faked us with the wrong purpose with faulty thinking, misplaced priorities, personal criticism, misfortune and defeat. He's distracting us from the real play that God has a purpose for our lives. God has meaning for us. God has something for us to do in this lifetime. And so we have to be careful about Satan's play action pass, that you're not being tricked and duped into doing things that are not godly. And I'm sure you agree with me today that this nation is facing one of its worst national crises, fighting pandemics on every end, personal attacks, pandemic attacks. We're dealing with pandemics with job loss and disinformation and misinformation deliberately, systemic racism, pandemic of division and a nation divided, and, and we have now a, a partisan electoral democracy that's not working for anybody, it seems, and an election that will decide the fate of us for the next 40 years, as I mentioned earlier. We have a brand of evangelicalism that's not Christian. All right, want me to say that again? <laughs> a, a twisted brand of evangelism that's not Christian. We're dealing with classism and Neolism and fundamentalism and other kinds of isms that has invaded our rank. Nobody sitting here today ever thought that we'd be in the position that we are in now. Or probably in the last four years we'd be here dealing with some of the issues that our forefathers dealt with years ago. And here we are in 2020 fighting the same old battles. They told us in, 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 in 1970 things are going to be better than it was in 1950. They told us in 1980 it would be better than things were in the 1960s. They told us in 2000 because we got a new millennium that things are going to be better than the last century. And now they're telling us in 2020 things are going to get better later on. But when? I ask you today, when are they really going to get better? When? Why are we still dealing with the same issues that our forefathers had to deal with? in slavery and out of slavery and, and antebellum south and the post antebellum south why are we still fighting the same battles and if we don't get rid of this our sons and daughters will be fighting the same old battles this is not the American exceptionalism that people talk about it's not the America that I dreamed of when I was a child in South Boston Virginia growing up wanting to be this or wanting to be that it's not the America that I thought that I would be able to realize all the possibilities of my dream. Nobody told me there'll be dream blockers in my way. Nobody told me there'll be hindrances in my way. Nobody told me that there'll be, there'll be a war on truth. That now if you tell the truth, somebody will turn it into a lie. Nobody told me there was that kind of war that I'll be fighting today and that my dreams will be on hold. Nobody told us that. Nobody, nobody did that. And it seems that in the midst of all we're doing today, nobody wants to stand up for divine correctedness. We don't want to correct each other. We don't want to stand up to each other. We'll talk about each other. We'll do that, but we won't do it while you're around. We've got good things to say about you when we're with you. But we ain't got too much to say when y'all help me this morning. Amen, amen. Uh, Martin Neil Mahler, who was a great German theologian during the time of Nazi Germany, and spent the last 10 days in a concentration camp in, in Nazi Germany, almost gave up his life for speaking out against Hitler. And he had this to say, he said, he said, when it came for the trade unionists in Germany, I did not speak out. When they, when, when they came for, for those who 
who stood up for righteousness. He said, I didn't speak out. When it came for righteous people to say something, do something, to be something that they've never been before, when there was a call for national creativity and national dialogue, he said, I didn't speak out. And when it came for my brothers, I didn't speak out. When it came for my sister, I didn't speak out. And then he said, but when it came for me, there was nobody else to speak out. Is that going to be our theme today? Is this going to be the theme for us the rest of the year? Is that going to be the theme moving forward that we stand by and watch everybody be taken off into captivity, captivities of their own mind, the captivities of our nation, the captivity of things that's bothering and troubling us? Are we going to stand by and watch them being taken off? And then when it comes to us, there's nobody to speak for us. Is that the analogy that we have today? And, 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 and so... As we look at the text this morning, the text is about bring, bridging the gap between Christianity and our ecclesiology. It's about what we believe about Christ and what we believe about the church and how the church can make a better world and make people better and help us to understand and continue to follow the American dream that we all have. It shows how far, the text does, shows how far off we may be and yet how close we really are. It speaks of the love ethic of Jesus Christ. It speaks of the love. Paul said there's three things on earth that we all have. That's faith, hope, and love. But he says the greatest of these is love. It speaks of our passion for one another, our compassion for one another. It speaks of the true manifestations of neighborlessness and the divorce between religion and personhood. Now, I can talk about that for a long time because there is a divorce between our religion, our Christianity, and our personhood. Sometimes we want to dissect the two. Sometimes we're Christians, and then sometimes we're not. That don't make me take off my collar, as we say. <laughs> don't, let, don't, let me, don't, you know, don't let me, don't let me go black on you. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? right, right? I, I want always a Christian. You ever told somebody that I ain't always been saved now? Don't, don't get it twisted. I, I had another life before the Lord <laughs> picked me up <laughs> and saved me. <laughs> and sometimes it shows up. <laughs> Amen, somebody. <laughs> and, so, and so divorce between our religion and our personhood, our creeds and our deeds. The story is an opportunity to heal wounds and bind wounds, mend fences, Look beyond our differences to a new and a brighter day. Hope for our children, hope for those we love, and hope for a better world. Being a good neighbor in this context stretches beyond our borders to the regions and valleys and hills and molehills of this great land of ours. It speaks of our ability to be merchants of hope, as Howard Thurman used to call it, prisons of hope and to go beyond our existential limitations. Being neighborly for Jesus is without life's classifications. You know how we like to classify each other. Well, he's a doctor, he's a lawyer, he's a judge, school teacher, janitor. You know, we have the life classifications and, and, and classification of who we are and who we think we may be. Paul reminds us to never think of ourselves more highly than we ought. And I think some people read the Bible and skipped over that part. Amen. So Jesus, for Jesus, neighborly is beyond geography. It's beyond citizenship, race, class, cultural, or national origin. It's not about uh, uh, how much money you have, but it's about what has you. Or, or, or money you don't have, or, or political correctness, or political, or political uh, or politics of identity, or identity politics, or political affiliations. I learned a long time ago, my brothers and sisters, that having more will not necessarily get you more. That your valuables don't determine your value. That net worth don't always translate into self-worth. That bigger is not always better. We recite the Lord's prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. I should not want, but at the same time, the reality is that we do want things. We want diamonds on our fingers and pearls around our necks and furs on our backs and gaiters on our feet. 
But none of that, Jesus said, surpasses the love ethic that Jesus discusses with this good Samaritan. And the message that he brings to us today, that we need to look out and realize that your valuables and your value are two different things. We need to be able to separate net worth and self-worth. Because, believe it or not, all of that will be gone when you leave. And somebody says, a songwriter says, only what you do for Christ will last. All the other things you do won't stand the turf. But what you do for Christ will last. And I think we need to remember that one fiat that God gives us. Only what we do for Christ will last. The text begins, my brothers and sisters, with a, with a man who came to Jesus. He was a lawyer. And when I say he was a lawyer, the Bible says he was a lawyer here, we're not talking about a Perry Mason type lawyer. We're not talking about Johnny Cochran. We're not talking about your lawyer. We're talking about someone who was schooled in the Mosaic Law. And at this time, the Mosaic Law were the first five books of the Bible, what we call the Pentateuch. And so he was schooled in that law. And it's very strange that he would come to Jesus and ask Jesus the simple question when he was already schooled in the law. <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't with me. He came to Jesus with a question which is not surprising since, since that's what lawyers do. They ask questions. We ask questions. Uh, 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 questions we all ask as we journey through life. The two dominant questions that we have for one another is how do we get here and where are we going? And I think Jesus already answered that for many people, but some people just haven't got the memo. It's, it, questions are a theological inquiry into a deeper question about life and liberty and the heartbeat of our souls. So the man came to Jesus with one of life's most pressing questions. What must I do, he says, in order to have eternal life? By all accounts, this is a very legitimate question. And sometimes we have questions with the best intentions. You know, some people can give you a parathetical question and give you, you know, questions with exclamation points behind them. And we can come up with all kinds of questions. And sometimes they're very legit. And this question, however, although it's legit, it carried a bad motive. It was a deception defection. Its purpose was to ensnare Jesus. It was to ensnare others. And, and sometimes we play this deception to, uh, trap ourselves, tricking people with questions that we already know the answer to. Mm-hmm. Now, let me tell you this. I've been around the block a little while. You can't fool me with that trick. Because I know you know the answer. But you just want to know what I'm going to say back. And, and come back and say, well, you didn't say that two years ago. <laughs> yeah, anybody, anybody ever had that happen to them? You, you had a different tone back in the day. You know, and so and so Jesus is 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 ready for that. He's he he knows the trap is coming. And we try to trap each other sometimes and ensnare others <laughs> with using fuzzy language and fancy numbers and sophisticated narrations and, and straight up lies. Am I am I calling it out? The Carl Jung calls it Carl Jung calls it the hidden power of the dark side. You know our dark side don't show up. But every now and then, but when it shows up, it really shows out. (laughs) So the lawyer tried to trap Jesus to throw him off base. He wanted to challenge Jesus' orthodoxy. And the question could not end it right there in a theological and philosophical debate. Jesus could have gone that way if he wanted to. There was philosophy and theology and all the other ologies. Jesus could have gone there, but, but Jesus pulls the question out of midair and placed it on a dangerous road between Jerusalem and Jericho. Are you with me? Jesus flips the question on the lawyer and he asks the lawyer, what, uh, what does your law say? Sometimes we need to flip the questions too. What do you think? What is your definition? What do you mean? What is written in your law? How do you interpret it? What, what conclusions have you drawn? So the lawyer goes back into the long engagement of Israel's history and takes a page from the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. He's in love 
God, with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, and neighbor as yourself. So in other words, you have to love God in three ways. You have to love with your heart, mind, and soul. If you're not loving God with your heart and don't love him with your soul, then you're not giving God complete love. If you love with all your strength and you miss out on the love part, then you're not giving God complete love. And so the lawyer says what he needs to say. And, and I pause there for a moment. The word neighbor here means nearness or closeness. And, 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 and so if we read this text, and I know you have already, and you pause behind the last word of mind or soul, if you stop there, you miss the true meaning of religion. You can't pause there and stop right there. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Because if you stop there, you'll miss the whole meaning of the text. The text says, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See, we glide over that part. We glide over that because all we want to hear is that how we ought to love the Lord, but not how we ought to love our neighbor. And the reason why we have a hard time with that because some of us don't even love ourselves. And if you don't love yourself, you can't love somebody else. And so we glot over that. Yeah, I love the Lord. Yeah, you love him, but can you love your brother who you're sitting beside right now? Do you love your sister? Do you love your family? Do you love your higher institution? Do you love the church as Christ loved the church and died for the church? Do you love it that way? Jesus said, love the church as, as, as Christ died for the church. We ought to love the church in a sense that we're willing to give our lives for what the church stands for. You can't escape duty. And so, and so, and so, the text cannot be glossed over in that text, in, the, in this context. And, and, and we can't pause over it and stop right there because we miss the, 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 the splendor and the squalor. We miss the grandeur and the grind. And so to do so would not be helpful. And so Jesus says, do this. And thou shall live. It is unambiguous, it, it is unequivocal, and it is unmistakable. It is a clarion call to action. Confidence in a bright tomorrow. Confidence that things will work out for you and your family, our nation, and those we love. It is where truth takes a stand against that which is trying to trap it. it it's the discovery that there's more that unites us than there is that divides us. That we have more in common than we have apart. That un the understanding of this, do this, and do that, is that every valley, if we do this or that, that every valley of despair will be lifted. Pride and prejudice will be overcome. Mountains of obstacles will be brought down. The crooked way of deception will be straightened out. The rough places of delay will be removed. And all flesh, Jesus said, we shall see it together. The lawyer gave the correct answer, but, and Jesus says, do this, and you shall live. But the reality is that he knew the correct answer, but he would not apply it to his own life. And how many of us are like that? How many people you know are like that? They know the right answer but they dare apply it to their own life. Yeah, they can give the book, they can give the instruction, they can tell you how to do it, they got the manual, they got the blueprint, they got the road map, they know how to do it, but they want to apply it to their own life. If you tell me to love the Lord, you better love him yourself. If you tell me to go to church, you better go yourself. If you tell me to praise God, you better praise him yourself. If you tell me to pray, you better pray yourself. If you tell me to do right, then you better do right yourself. If you tell me that things are going to work out, then show me how things are going to work out. Be the change you want to make and what you want to see in others. You be that first. Amen, somebody. And so, and so we do that all the time. We have this, this, this rightfulness in our own eyes, but we want to apply it to our own lives. And I, and I know a lot of people like that, my sister, that just won't do it, just won't do right, but they'll tell you to do right. Don't touch that, and they'll touch it anyway. Don't, don't go to that, but they go anyway. Don't go in that looking show. <laughs> I'm going to leave it right there. Don't tell me not to go there. You, you're there every other day. <laughs> I was reading something funny the other day. Somebody told me a funny story the other day. 
about a lady who um, parked a car in front of a liquor store. She was going inside to get looked at. She had two kids in the car, and uh, she got out of one of the stores. She forgot to put her cart in park. It stayed in drive. And so she got in the store. The car just kept going to the parking lot, <laughs> and, it, and it run off and hit three cars. While she's in the liquor store, y'all still missed the point. She's in the liquor store trying to get a bottle of liquor. She forgot to put her car in drive and, and park and kept it in drive. And the car took off with the three kids in the car and hit three other cars. Luckily, the kids were not home. But when she came out, she, you know, all kinds of stuff happened. But the reality is that she's so busy trying to get a drink of liquor that she ain't got time to take care of her kids, make sure her kids were secure. And that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. We talk about it all the time. We talk a good game, but we don't play a good game. You know, you know we, 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 uh, what, what somebody said, we, we want to look good without doing good. You know, people like that, they dress up for the part. They look good, but they won't do good. They want, to, they want the title. They want the role. They want whatever you give them, but they don't want to do good. Look good, but don't do good. And this is what Jesus is telling us. Instead of applying the answer, the lawyer wanted to justify himself. He tried, he tried, he tried to trick Jesus by, by saying that I need another response. I don't know what you mean by neighbor. I don't know what you, I, I don't understand this whole concept of loving a neighbor. What do you mean by that? And we do that all the time. What's your definition of what it is that you're trying to get me to do? Could you explain that a little bit more? You know how people do you, right? Well, well, Brother Wright, I don't understand what you're saying. Could, could you break that down? Well, I don't understand that either. Can you go a little bit deeper? We, we got people like that, right, and, who, who, who would do that. And every day we meet people who, who kind of prod us and, and, and badger us with the same questions like that and trying to pull wool over our eyes. But we know what they're doing. And Jesus knew the trick. He saw it coming. So Jesus comes up with an explanation. Not an explanation, but he comes up with a parable. He comes up and he says, and he says, he says, there's a man that came down from Jerusalem to Jericho. <laughs> that, that's what he does, right? And, and, so, and so the lawyer is trying to find some wiggle room. You know people try to find wiggle room when you ask them something? Because you already know what they need to say, but they won't say it. So they're just looking for some wiggle room. They're trying to wiggle their way out of it, like a worm on a, on a fish hook, trying to get away, right, right? And, 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 and so he, he wanted to know how far he would have to extend his obligation for love. <clears throat> he wanted to know how far to extend his sense of neighborhood. He, he, maybe he wanted to know how far off the boundaries of the region, region stretched. You know, there are people like that, like Peter said, Lord, how long should I forgive my neighbor? And Peter was thinking seven times, that's enough. And Jesus goes a little bit further, 70 times seven, you can keep multiplying that until it, until it factors out. And, 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 and so sometimes we know the, want to know the reasons of our love, the boundaries of our love. But let me tell you something, church, the love has no boundaries. Love is kind, love is it's, it's cool, as my daughters used to say. Love, love, love is infinite. Love is, love, love is something that we all need. So there are no boundaries when it comes to God's love, and especially the church. There is no, no boundaries when it comes for church love. And we often like this man's thinking about the obligations, thinking that it's a matter of geography. And don't love only extends to our neighbor next door, or it only extends to those in the church. But we should know better than that by now. So Jesus refused to be trapped. He pulls the question out of midair and places it on the dangerous road of Jericho. Jesus explained what a neighbor is by sharing the story of the Good Samaritan. Some scholars suggest that the story is not a parable but an allegory. He claims it's, 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 some say it's a real story and some say it's allegorical. The story had probably made the headlines long ago in the Jerusalem Post, in the Jericho Times, in the PNN Network. That's Palestine News Network. They didn't really have that, but I'm just making a case. <laughs> it, it, it was a familiar story to the town people. You and I may not understand it today, but they understood it back in the day because it was a familiar story coming down Jericho Road. So, so the people could not say that Jesus made this up. Because they read the story all the time. They knew about the story. Somebody had already told them about it. And, and, so, and so 
Uh, for years, preachers have kind of romanticized the story here. We have conditioned it to say what we want, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else. They have allegorized it. For example, this is the typical sermon. Uh, um, it would go like this. Uh, um, um, the victim was a lost sinner. Lying half dead meant that he was alive spiritually and dead physically. That the priests, in this case, and the Levite are both representatives of the law, which in itself cannot save people, right? For by works, in case y'all forgot, it's not by works that you are saved, but by grace. So you can't work in the church and expect to go to heaven. I mean, the Bible makes that clear. Faith without works is what? Dead. What does dead mean? Dead. <laughs> now, I don't need to explain that, do it. I don't need to explain that to anybody. <laughs> so so the, the Samaritan is Jesus who saves the man, pays the bill, redeems him, and promises to return. The innkeeper is the local church where believers are cared for. And the two pence represents two ordinances of the church, communion and baptism. And that's what some preachers have been preaching down through the year. And if you do that, you'll miss the point. Because that is not the point. It is not an imaginary narrative or some kind of delusional text. It's not some kind of uh, sophisticated narration that Jesus uses here. But it has something to do with our spiritualness and who we are as someone who loves the Lord. It is not an allegorical statement on account. Jesus said the man was leaving Jerusalem to Jericho. By all accounts, this was a dirty road, a, 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 a bloody road, a hoodie road. It was a bad neighborhood. Jericho represents the worst of humanity. It represents a spiritual and physical beatdown of the vicissitudes of life. It is our Waterloo. And of all of us have been somewhere on a Jericho road. Am I right about it? We've been on Jericho Road where we've been beaten by, by the storms of life. We've been robbed of our character and our dignity. We've been half dead on a lonely island of despair. We've been all stripped of something meaningful in our lives. Right now, our dreams are on hold. Our promises have not been realized. We are all in a pandemic. All of us are quarantined. All of us are inside. So those things that we wished and hoped to be doing this year, we are no longer doing. We're all on Jericho Road. We know Jericho, the rough side of the mountain, the hardship and the headache, the trial and the tribulation, the lack of and the need of. We've been hustled on Jericho Road. We've been bustled on Jericho Road. We've taken the road for granted. We've been let down. We've been disappointed. We've been depressed. We've fallen the victim of somebody's sick scheme. We've been lied to. All of us have been on Jericho Road. Am I right about it? Say anybody on the road now? But, but you know that God will make a way for you and get us off this dying path. Am I right about it? So Jericho Road is a, it's a, it's a badge of humility. But I can tell you this, God has a way to make us whole. God has a way to fix what's going on in our own life. Whatever we've been stripped of, whatever we've been blooded by, whatever we've been beaten by, whatever we've been hassled by, God has a way to deliver his people out of all hurt, harm, shame, and danger we find ourselves in. Oh, I feel like preaching a little bit. All right, now y'all y'all sit down right now. I'll, I'll preach a little bit later, okay? <laughs> and, and, and so that's Jericho Road. And so Jesus tells us about this certain man coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And then he mentions three people as I get ready to park the car and land the plane. He tells us about three people who are empowered to make a difference in the man's life. And I don't know about you, have you ever been empowered to do anything? And, and that's the thing that we have to do in the church and understand share responsibilities. We empower, the church has empowered people in it to do certain things in it. It's like my car, you know, if I get out of the lane, it tells me to get back in it. Because some things God has not empowered you to do. Stay in your lane. 
right? I mean, am I saying anything that's crazy or non-contradictory? I mean, I mean, stay in your lane. And this is what Jesus, Jesus said there were three people who were empowered to know the difference, to empower, to help the man. He said the first one that came by, the first man that came by who was empowered to make a difference was the priest. And he said the priest came along and look at what the text said. The text said they came by and he looked on the man and it went by on the other side. You know, we come up with a lot of excuses for the priest. You know, we said, well, you know, he was on his way to a religious ceremony and he really didn't have time to help. We say that there may have been criminals lurking around. You know how people will ambush you. They'll set somebody up. But I'm saying if the man is bloody, there ain't no, there ain't no setup. <laughs> He's been left half dead. There ain't no setup. The man is hurting. But we come up with this lame excuse for the, for the preacher. Maybe he wanted to, to, to get out of the hood as fast as he could. Maybe he was a priest that, with a church downtown but had a suburban mentality. <laughs> you know preachers like that, right? They, they got a church in the ghetto, but they, their mind is out in the suburbs. <laughs> it's, maybe they said it's not his fault. Maybe, maybe the priest was saying, it's not the man's fault that he got attacked. I don't, it's not my fault that the man got attacked. I don't have anything to do with this. It's not my business. He was heartless is what he was. He had no guts, no compassion for those who were hurting and in need. A man of the cloth who's supposed to do better had no hope and had no heart for somebody laying there and dying. He showed us that, that some leaders and even those in the pulpit and otherwise are just as detached from everyday happenings in the places they claim to minister and are oblivious to what is happening in the communities that they represent. You know, preachers like that, they're so detached. I mean, you have a killing right in front of the church and they want them to know it. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. It happens in corporate America. CEOs don't know what's happening on the bottom unless somebody get a memo to the top and then they try to hide it from him. But he don't need to know that. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Y'all work with me here. Y'all work with me, the Lord. Holy Spirit got me up here trying to do something. I hope y'all catch it. Amen. I hope you get it. I hope you get it. And so, so sometimes we're just at a task from the community. And so, and so the priest was unfazed by the ins and outs of the community, and he just walked by on the other side. The second person who was empowered to make a difference was, and connected with the church was the Levite. Now check this out. Uh, he showed no concern. The Bible said he came by and he looked over and did the same thing as his counterpart, the priest did. He walked by on the other side. He showed no concern. Church folk. Y'all missed that. Church folk. The top echelon of the church. The hierarchy of the church showed no concern. And so, and so the Levite looked over on the man. In other words, he peeped in on the situation. And, and uh, he was curious but not concerned. And, 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 and you have to be careful with people who try to peep in on your situation. Be careful who you let take a peep. Because everybody peeping. <laughs> Ain't, ain't peeping for the right intent. You know how people just dip and dab into a meeting? <laughs> they just want to get a peep. I, I, ain't, I can't stay all day. I'm just going to come in for a little while. Those are your peepers. <laughs> and, and see, peoples have no loyalty. They, they are not honest. They, they are detached and no attachments to anybody. They're not committed to anything. They just want to do what? Peep. So they can go tell somebody what they peeped out. <laughs> peeping Tom, peeping Harry, peeping Sally, all the peepers. But, but the Levite, notice what he does. He, he, the Levites were responsible for the praise and worship in the church. Yeah, they had to get there before everybody else. And they had to set up the church and light the incense and make sure everything was working well, the instrument and everything was in place. And also they led the worship. 
That's what the Levites did. And, 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 and so, and so in this case, the Levites coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho and they looked in on a man and he went by, peeped in on the situation and went by on the other side. Only thing that tells me that his shout did not translate to social action. That his disconnect between his theology and his weology, now it's not a word now, I'm trying to look it up. I just made that up the other day. His theology and his weology means that all of us coming together and doing God's work and doing what God has called on us to do. He did what the priest did. Nothing. It's a bad example of religious people and how they responded to the gospel message. How can you praise God one minute and walk out of your door of the church and see somebody lying for dead? Or just lying anyway, even if they ain't dead or half dead and pass by without any concern, without using your cell phone to call 911 to call somebody and let them know there's somebody there. Now, you don't have, I'm not saying that you need to go and pick them up and take them home. But what I am saying, do something. Don't do what the priest and the Levite did. Don't just pass by as if there's no concern about what's taking place. That's not what Christianity is all about. It's about us helping each other. It's about a global unity. It's about us coming together to do God's will and God's word. And so the priest and the Levite responded in a way that none of us really should all to respond. And the third person in power to make a difference was a good Samaritan. He saw the man was a Jew and a Samaritan. See, the Jews and the Samaritans didn't have any dealings, like the slave and the slave master. They didn't really like each other. These two did not like each other. The, the Jews that burned down went in the Samaritan temple some years ago, and so they call them half-breeds. That's what the Jew called Samaritan, half-breeds. You know, we have another word, you know, some people use today for that. You know, but, but, but they call them half-breeds, and, and they didn't like them too much. It's like the woman at the well. Jesus speaking to her, and she comes along, and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus talking to her as she comes to draw water. And she said, she said, I'm a Samaritan, and you're a Jew. Why are you talking to me? We don't have any relationship together. And Jesus said, oh, yes, we do. I, I know exactly what you're doing with your life. And she said, the man that you stand with ain't yours. Ain't that what he said? And, and then what else he said? He, he, he said? he said, he said, the water that you're dipping into would dry out. That well would not last, he says. But he says that if you, what did you say? If you will embrace me in my teaching, I'll give you rivers of living waters. That's the Samaritan and the Jew coming together. And so, and so this is what makes the difference for all of us. So the third person was a good Samaritan. Jesus said he came down, he had no dealing because of the cultural and racial and contextual differences. He didn't use that as a condition to do nothing. He showed the genius of true love. This is what the Samaritan does. The genius of true love. He taught what he did was show some agape love. That's the love of God operating in the human heart. He didn't just peep in on a man. He didn't ask the man, hey, brother, uh, can you talk a little bit since you have dead? You know, can you tell me your nationality? Can you tell me where you went to school? Can you tell me whether you're Alpha or Omega? Or Kappa or G Phi G? Beta Phi Sigma, or you part of the Divine Nine? Was your wife an AKA or Delta? Do you have a do you have your copay? Do you have your insurance? You, you, you know, you know, or some kind of of some kind of pre-existing uh, condition. <laughs> or, or, or do you have an address or a cell phone where I can text you and remind you that your bill is due? He saw a brother. He didn't ask though because he saw a brother in need and wanted to make a difference in his life. And that is the manifestation of a good neighbor, my brothers and sisters. And who among us have seen the misery of our people and not wanted to make a difference? Who among us have seen sorrow and grief 
babies separated from their mothers and hardship and brokenness and dismay and despair and not wanting to do something about it. Jesus asked the lawyer which of the three made a difference. And the lawyer had no other choice but to stand by and said the Samaritan did. But he was so mean and hateful, he wouldn't even mention the Samaritan did it. He said the one who showed respect, not even mentioning the good Samaritan because he didn't want to call out the Samaritan name. He was a good neighbor in a bad neighborhood. And that is the message for us today. Can we leave this place, go to the worst neighborhood or whatever hood we're in and be a good neighbor? And as I put the car in the garage, land the plane, dock the boat, say bye to my friends, say bye to you all. I just came by to tell somebody that you are not alone in your love ethic. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believed in him shall not perish, should have everlasting life. Down to this low life of existence, he came 42 generations for you and I. Paul said that he took the form of a slave and thought it not robbery to be equal with God and in that day will come when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God he's with us in our efforts to be good neighbors he has the power to defend us the holiness to wash us the justice to justify us the kindness to keep us the mercy to mold us the truth that marches with us the word that hides us when the storms try and overtake us there's a flood of problems in our life just know that God is a very pleasant help in time of need that he still sits high and he looks low he's a way maker promise keeper light in darkness he's Jehovah Jireh a God who provides Jehovah Nisi Jehovah Shabbat a God we can shout about he's Emmanuel God with us he's the great high priest the God or the good shepherd of our life he's the sheep Hannah Stone, the bridegroom. He's the author and finish of our faith and the Alpha and the Omega, the King of Kings, the Lion of Judah, the Peace and Redeemer, a rock in a weary land. He's the great I am. But not only that, he died for you and I. He died on a cross called Calvary. He died. And they thought that when he was on the cross and when he said it is finished, they thought they said he is finished. And they put him in a tomb. But I I read somewhere that when Mary and Mary Magdalene and the other women went to the tomb, there was nobody there. They said, three days I would rise up. Three days is all that it would take for me to get up. And I'm here to tell somebody, he got up. And three days he got up. Did he get up, somebody? Did he get up? Did he get up? Yes, he did. He stayed up into the curtains of the temple were torn asunder until the earth got drunk until the lights turned into darkness he died but he didn't stay dead for you and I he didn't stay down for you and me he saved us and I'm so glad that I serve a risen Christ that I don't serve a dead Christ everything the Bible says about him he can do it do I have a witness in here that God can do it can he do it church y'all ain't working with me I think I'm preaching better than y'all shouting up in here can won't God do it won't he do it won't he work a way out no matter what happens no matter what you're going through God will make a way somehow He's all right. He's all right with me. And will you become the good neighbor that God is looking for? If you're already there, it's cool. If you ain't, realize that God is with you in your efforts to do good and not do bad. Be the good neighbor in a bad neighborhood. God bless you. Won't you stand all over the building? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you now. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We love you right now. God, we just thank you wherever we are right now. We ask for a special blessing on us, your people right now. Let's touch them, Lord. Whatever they're going through, whatever they're feeling, whatever hurt, harm, or pain is coming your way, Lord. Touch them in a special way now. Let them know that things are going to be all right. 
that you already worked out what they're trying to figure out. Thank you, God, for your love in this place. Thank you for your anointing in this place right now. God, I can feel your spirit working on somebody. Your spirit working and moving in this place right now. Thank you, Lord, for the holy ground that we're standing on. Thank you for being in your presence. Thank you for providing for us another day. If we have anybody in this church who want to give their life to the Lord, this is a good time as ever to do it. You walk down the aisle and become this Christian experience. Watch care. You come by baptism. If you've never been baptized. Brothers and sisters on Facebook page, the same invitation is open to you. As we open up our hearts and try to be good people and follow the love ethic of Jesus Christ and do what God and not be tricked, not be tricked by Satan's play action pass. But be astute. Jesus said, I send you out as doves, as sheep, but harmless as a dove. It does, but hungry is just a dove or something like that. But he sends us out to be harmless creatures and to help one another. If you want to get on that bandwagon, this is the time, this is a great time to do it. I say to my brothers and sisters, if, you, if you're a Christian, now it's time to show it. If you love Jesus, it's time to show it. If you care about the Lord and his, and his kingdom, then it's time to show it. It's not, not a time for Christians to be on the sidelines. This is the most crucial time in the history of our country, or one of the most crucial. This is no time for playing games and being wishy-washy. It's time to come full circle and say, I love the Lord enough to make the sacrifices to be the good neighbor that he's asking us to be. Even if it's a bad neighborhood, or even a good neighbor in a not-so-good neighborhood. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. We're going to go into our communion service at this time. And I invite you on Facebook page, if you want to join us, you can take out some bread and some old wine if you got it in the house. Great juice will be okay. And you can join us as we do the Lord's Supper. God bless you. First Baptist Church, Denby, the word of God has been preached. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the message and the messenger. Come on, we can do a little better than that. The word of God has been preached. And we thank God for, again, the message and the messenger. We thank God for what our eyes have seen. We thank God for what our ears have heard and what our hearts have felt. Amen. We're now going to transition over to our... Uh, Holy Communion part of our service. Uh, we trust everyone uh, has been blessed by the message that came forth. Uh, if you have your supplements, we ask that you would get them prepared and ready. Uh, whether you have uh, came up uh, yesterday to receive the supplements at the church or you've consecrated something in your home, we pray that uh, you would get that ready now as we prepare for our Holy Communion service. May we bow in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now thanking you, Father God, for this opportunity that you have given to us to do that which you have commanded us to do in remembrance of the great sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray that you would transform the supplements that are before us, Father God. We will remember, Father God, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, broken for us on the cross at Calvary through the vine representing his blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary. Bless this service, Father God. We'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we ask all these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Here at First Baptist Church Denby, we observe the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. 
on the fourth Sunday uh, of every month. And this means that we have done this 10 times. This will be the 10th time we've done it this year. And what a blessing it is because some of us, when we think about it in January, February, March, some of us have gone on to be with the Lord. But God has allowed us to do it one more time. And for that, we say thank you. We're now going to have Minister Fox read our Holy Communion Scripture. Scripture reading will be taken from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, for which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same matter also, he took the cup, which he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For if he that eat and drink unworthily eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word and sanctify the truth deep down in our heart. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for the reading of his word. In that passage, Paul admonishes us to examine ourselves. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, the Bible tells us to examine ourselves to see whether we're in the faith. And before we partake of Holy Communion, the supplements, I'm asking that we would pray individually and yet collectively. Again, as we prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper in silent prayer, maybe bow in prayer. Amen. 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 The bread that we hold in our hand. It represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible declares that the night that our Lord was betrayed, he, he took this bread. And when he broke it, he said, take and eat it. For again, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Saints, eat ye all of it. The Bible declares in like manner he took the cup and the fruit of the vine. And this represents the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Bible declares without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, there's no payment, no satisfaction for our sin. Drink ye all of it. Amen. We trust that, again, this message that our pastor has preached to us has been a blessing and a benediction to you. We're now going to turn it over to Pastor Johnson for the benediction. Thank you all again for such a wonderful worship experience. The Lord is good. How? All the time. And all the time, God is good. Thank you for a wonderful worship experience. Thank you for all the leaders and everybody that participated today. What a wonderful day.
Let's take this word out. Let's take the spirit out. Let's take the feelings that we have within us. Take it out to a dying world. Let somebody know that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all that's transpired under this roof. Thank you for each other. We thank you for the love that will be shared among us to the world. We give you praise. We give you honor for all that you do. Now, bless us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. And let the people of God say amen. Amen. Come on, say it like you mean it. Amen.